Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. So for today, I am doing another one of the Chinese uh, lunar signs or zodiac signs or whatever you want to call it. I am doing another one of the signs from the Chinese zodiac. So for today, I thought since this month is my birthday month, uh, July 4th is when I was born, I thought I would do my zodiac sign, which is a monkey. I was really excited to do this one, and uh, I was also very excited for this month. I'm officially turning 30. Yes, I officially exited my 20s, <laughs> and now I have entered my 30s. So uh, this one was going to be a fun one. I wanted to go all out on it and try something really cool and different and just have fun with it. So I've had a little bit of struggles in the past when combining these different animal signs with dragons. I've noticed that I kind of struggle with, uh, I don't know, combining the two, like either it's too much of the original animal or too much of the dragon, so the animal gets lost. I think I've been more struggling with putting too much of the animal and not giving it enough of a dragon look. So this one I think is like a very happy medium point. So I wanted the overall body to have like a monkey slash primate structure. Um, I wanted it to have like long limbs, a cool big long tail, and uh, some gnarly cool teeth to go like more in a monkey slash dragon maw type of thing. And of course we had to have horns. Um, so I had that kind of in mind in this planning phase when I was just trying to sketch it out and figure out how I wanted the body to be. I had a couple people in my Twitch chat while I was doing this live recommend adding like wings or something else even make it like more dragon-esque but I don't know the wings weren't really driving with me in this beginning phase it probably would have been an easy thing to add to really sell the dragon aspect but I was like I'm, I'm kind of digging where this is going without the wings even if it's not like hardcore like all dragon or hardcore all monkey I think this was a happy middle point for me personally so with the rough sketch out of the way, it was time to jump in and sketch out the final look. So for the overall like pose, I really wanted to show off as many details as I could for the monkey. Um, so I thought it'd be really cool for it to be like climbing in a tree or hanging off of some vines. So then we can see a lot of the cool detailing that I put into this design. Um, so when I was drafting this and figuring this out, I added a couple things while I was doing this rough sketch. First of all, I wanted to give it some other really cool and awesome and gnarly characteristics. For example, uh, the hands. Uh, and I ended up using eye eye hands because I thought a really creepy, long, taloned finger both like combined in like the primate aspect and made it look kind of dragon-esque. I thought it was a really good middle point and the weird gnarly long hands would be perfect for adding like scales or like weird texturing to it. I thought that would work really well. So I had that in mind as well as for the tail um, later on when you see it when I sketch it. Uh, I kind of wanted to incorporate I guess more of a crocodile look. I wanted to have like a almost realistic dragon situation, I guess, where it was like, uh, had like spikes and spines, kind of like a crocodile. This does make the tail a little less like, what is it, prehensile? Is that what the tail is called for a monkey? Like, it would make it a little bit harder for this tail to like wrap around and hold on to a branch because it has like, I, I don't know, it ends up being a little bit thicker. It has some more like scales and um, like, spikes to it so i don't know i would like to hear from you guys because i'm not like an expert on prehensile tails so I, i'm wondering if you guys think this would still have the ability to wrap and grab onto things because i mean there's other like reptiles that have kind of prehensile tails i could be wrong but i feel like chameleons kind of use their tail for 
maybe not fully hanging off of it, but I feel I've seen them using it to grip onto sticks and branches and things for stabilization. So, I mean, maybe this one still could be one. I'd like to know what you guys think if you're, if you know more than me, cause <laughs> I'm not as familiar with like what can for sure make a tail prehensile or not or whatever. But yeah, after I got this pose going, I was really happy with it. Um, I just was really driving with this piece and just felt this pose was really cool and epic. You got to see a lot of the details and it was kind of fun having it like hold onto and like be attached to this uh, tree on the side and then having some of the vines on the top. Uh, so I just really liked how this was looking and where it was going. I know there's gonna be probably a couple arguments on if this is like fully a dragon or not. I think it is. I think we incorporated enough um, dragon aspects and combined it really well with the monkey that I'm very pleased with it. I think it's much stronger than I feel my, my probably one of my weakest dragons in this series was the Taurus dragon for the celestial zodiac. Um, that one was just the bull. <laughs> I, I remember that was a really tough time, but uh, that one I felt didn't have enough dragon aspects at all. And I feel this one was a nice middle point. So with the sketch done, it was time to get some line art thrown down. And uh, this was just really fun to do. I think line art is one of my favorite things to do. I feel I say this a lot in these videos. And I think that's kind of why I still do these traditionally. Like I still love doing line art digitally and digital art does make a lot of things easier, like undos or changing out colors or whatever. But I've been really enjoying keeping these traditional. I think I'm gonna keep these traditional all the way through. I've had a couple people approach me and be like, well, why don't you do it digitally? So then you can like either take it on the go or I guess do more effects or kind of push some things a little bit more than what the markers like allow. And I don't know, it's just nice to get kind of more tactile here and there, especially after working multiple long hours at a day job that I look at a computer all day and then I come home and I edit like all day. It's nice to look at like an actual piece of paper because I don't really sketch as much in a sketchbook as like as much anymore. I have a sketchbook I bring with me everywhere, um, but I've been tending to just draw digitally whenever I'm on the go anyway. So this has been a nice change of pace and I think my eyes are thanking me for it as well. So it's just time to get stuck in and get this line art done and then we'll be jumping into color. All right, so with the initial line art done, just did a quick cleanup with my eraser to get rid of all the pencil lines, brushed off all of the eraser scraps. And as I was doing this, I was chatting with the Twitch chat. By the way, if you ever wanna see me draw live or hang out, check out twitch.tv forward slash kmckeg. I'm doing the 100 Dragon Challenges a lot more on there too. So if you wanna see them early, check it out. But either way, I was chatting with the Twitch chat and we were going back and forth on I guess what color we should make uh, this monkey. Uh, so my first initial gut instinct was I really wanted to make it like a blue and like maybe some like purples and reds and then uh, a couple of like brighter colors to contrast it, maybe add like a cool um, like mask to the monkey, some cool like different patterns and things. And so that's kind of what I went with. I tried out a bunch of different blues and greenish blues. Um, and I found a couple that I really liked. I also sampled a couple of like greens and browns for the, 
the tree and the vines. And then I sampled a few colors that I kind of thought would go nice with it, but I wasn't sure where I was going to use it. Um, I ended up getting like this like deep uh, maroonish red. Um, I also grabbed a couple of grays just in case I needed them. And like I said, I right here, I got some oranges and reds to put for like markings on the monkey. And so this one was kind of like, I had a general idea in my head, but I was flying in a little blind. Uh, there's just some times where I know exactly where I want to place the colors and other times where I'm like, we're just gonna kind of feel it out as we go. So for this one, I knew for sure I wanted to do the cool, like mask like look on the coloring. And then from there I was like, well, where do we want to put these blues? I started with the lighter blue um, and thought that'd be nice around the mask and then the ear area and maybe where there's more like skin and less fur. And then in the furrier areas, I was like, I really like this darker greenish blue. So that's kind of what I ran with. And I really love it. And I really like the contrast of the face with that orange. And then later on getting more of the blues and the light blues. So I had that in mind and I knew where I was gonna go with most of the body colors. And then I just had a couple of colors put to the side and uh, I just wasn't really sure what I wanted to do because I was like, well, we could keep this colorful and go for everything being very colorful and bright and maybe like pulling in some baboon colors. And then the Twitch chat actually recommended maybe using that red for the arms, but also adding in the gray. And I was like, okay, let's try that out. And I really like it because the, the eye eye that we initially based these hands off of has like very dark skin uh, where its hands and feet are. And so I was like, that would be the perfect tie in. And I was also kind of getting a little bit of inspiration from like crocodiles and such. And so they have really dark like skin and in those tans and browns and grays. And I just think it ended up looking really great for the feet and hands. I was really glad with the color differentiation because I was like, I could go with a really dark blue, like a super, super dark blue. Um, but I felt it would be too same, same, like everything being blue and just having a couple hits of orange. I'm like, maybe it would just become a blob of color, but adding that gray and that red just made the hands and feet so much more striking and they pop out really well, but also don't take away from the rest of the monkey. I was just, I was so happy with this one. I just was, you know, ecstatic with how these colors turned out. So with that, it was time to just, you know, buckle in and get this done. I just had a lot of coloring left for the trees and the vines and the tail. And then it was a bunch of shading from there and then just layering and layering and layering. So let's jump in and get some more coloring done. So slowly but surely, we're getting a little bit closer. And uh, I wanted to share that I think I'm gonna make this one the uh, print of the month over on Patreon. I just finally caught up on um, the prints and the sketch postcards and things. So now I'm current. And so we have this upcoming month to do. So uh, for July, we're gonna make this one the July print of the month. And then there will be another fun sticker thrown in with that as well. So if you aren't already subscribed on my Patreon, I'd love if you checked it out. It really helps me, it helps support the channel and you get a lot of fun goodies with it too. 
We are playing a little bit of catch up on the monthly monsters, so we're pretty behind on those, so I apologize for that, but we are chunking through them. We're getting them done. So hopefully we'll be current pretty soon, but I would love your guys' support over on Patreon and you get to see all these things early. Like usually I post my art um, like a couple days to a week early from when it gets posted either in a video or in, on Instagram. So I'd really appreciate it if you checked it out and uh, supported me over on there. But yeah, I was uh, really pleased with how this came out. I was talking with a couple of friends and my husband recently about how I feel these last 20 are gonna be probably the strongest of the 100 dragon challenge. It's like a case in point of like doing it over and over and making something constantly makes you better. Um, I think this is a great case study for any of you who have been following my art and want or and or want to get into art or are on your own art journey. I feel you can easily see how much I've progressed in these 100 dragons, like comparing the first one to now and like how I've expanded and like changed and made all of these just very different. And like each one has grown and I've grown as an artist with each dragon. So it's been really cool to see and like happy 30th to me. I can't believe I'm already 30. Um, but it, it, I'm just really pleased to see where my art career has gone and like see growth in these. So I guess that's the the cheer send off for today's video is uh, it's just cool to see how over six years of YouTube has really progressed and changed me as an artist and how this piece is like the I like I said, I feel the last 20 are just going to be so strong in this series and I keep adding more and adding more and making them more and more epic. So I'm very pleased with this one. But let's go ahead and look at last month's snake dragons. Guys, you had so many amazing ones like I really liked everyone who entered for this month. So first off, IDS World Art. I think this one's really cool. I love the the rainbow effect that your scales have and the cool shape of the rattler. Really awesome. And uh, Dina Sketchbook. Sorry if I butchered your username. I love that you did the hooded cobra and it looks like kind of like the wings. Really awesome. All of you guys did a great job with your snake dragon. So if you would like to make a monkey dragon, make sure to post it on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag KM100Dragons. And we also have a Discord that you are welcome to join. Uh, and there's a chat room on there where you can drop your dragons for the month as well. And we also host a monthly art competition. I'll be posting about that coming up in, an, in another episode for like in two weeks. But by the time this comes out, we've already posted the July art challenge. So if you want to participate, check out uh, the Discord down in the description. But either way, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, if I could say that and not stumble over my words. And uh, follow me on socials, I'd really appreciate it. But either way, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.